So this afternoon we have uh, a special guest uh, who is uh, Professor Ludmil Zikatanov. Maybe some of you know um, Ludmil since uh, he has many connections with uh, Italian people from numerical analysis community. Uh, he is a full professor uh, at Penn State University. He is a computational mathematician giving uh, many contributions in the context of uh, numerical methods for partial differential equations, for fast methods for solving the linear systems coming from PDEs. He is working a lot on uh, uh, multigrid methods and the domain, decomposi the domain decomposition methods. So currently he's working a lot on uh, brain modeling in collaboration with uh, some guys from the University of Oslo and uh, Taft University in Boston. So I think uh, I can give the floor to Ludmi. Thank you so much for coming in Naples and for giving this seminar today. Please. Uh, thank you, Pasqua. Uh, can, uh, can my slides be seen? Is it okay for me to start now? Hello? Okay, so uh, I'll talk about uh, multi-level methods for nearly singular problems in mixed dimensions. And this is a joint work with the group in uh, University of Oslo and Simular, where I'm on sabbatical this year. And also with uh, my collaborators, uh, Jose Hu and James Adler from Tufts University. So I, uh, I will point out uh, what uh, kind of... Th this is a big project that University of Oslo and Simular have. And I will point out what I'm participating with in... Uh, so first, let me say that uh, part of this talk uh, was given, I mean, I have given parts of this talk in front of audience who has no knowledge of, uh, no mathematical background or engineering background. So some of the things may look very simple and uh, not very rigorous, but uh, they can be, of course, made uh, rigorous. So let me continue here with uh, motivation. So we study solvers for partial differential equations that model uh, mesoscale, but I'll also show an example of macroscale multiphysics processes in biological tissue. And uh, mainly what we are concerned uh, with is uh, the flow in and uh, around the brain, uh, the human brain or the animal, the mammal, the mammal brain. So. Uh, examples that come from brain mechanics, this is uh, the potential exchange between cells, which I'm not going to touch. That's uh, then also uh, coupling uh, of BO and stocks when uh, one does uh, cerebrospinal fluid uh, modeling and how it moves in the brain. I'll show one such simulation, but it is not BO stocks, it's just a simple Darcy flow. Uh, I just want to show how, how, how actually difficult the things are to model and so on. I think things will be clear. Uh, later in the talk, I'll focus on the 3D, 1D coupled model of microcirculation, which uh, in fact uh, leads to nearly singular problems. And this is where we, we try to design optimal preconditioners working in all ranges of parameters uh, in, in, in such 3D, 1D problems. Okay, so I'll, I'll start with what, what we do numerical modeling. Uh, of course, we try to disc, which means we try to discretize a mathematical model and then we get some numbers after we run uh, uh, the numerical model on a computer. And what do we need for from such models is to uh, the, the following things and maybe more, but those are the ones I want to stress. Follow experimental findings. That means if you have experiments, you should uh, try to compare and match them. Also, numerical models should provide insights uh, that are 
into aspects that are difficult to test experimentally. And in fact, I think this is very important. And uh, I usually say this, if you cannot see things, you have to use mathematics, OK? And if we are talking about the brain, nobody wants to have experiment with the brain. So it's better to use uh, other, other means of modeling uh, the processes in the brain. And uh, also, we would like to have reliable model simulations, which are robust with respect to parameters. And they, they uh, of course, uh, finish in a, in a feasible time. Okay, so this all that I said uh, is uh, it, it requires that the research is actually interdisciplinary. Uh, I don't think one group can do all of all of this. And I give here as an example the, the collaborations in, in the University of Oslo and Simula in Norway with the Oslo University Hospital. So the modeling and computations are done uh, by uh, Wegert and uh, Kent Andre in uh, Simula and University of Oslo. There is a 10-year uh, project in Oslo University Hospital led by Kaya Nordengen and Sophie Lian, and uh, this is on Parkinson and uh, testing the glymphatic theory. So they basically uh, have uh, patients and collect data and... Uh, so one can compare, and I'll show some, some pictures uh, in, in the next few slides. So there are, of course, a finer, finer scale. So those are like uh, bigger, uh, bigger kind of projects. And finer scale, uh, if you model and you try to compute, one needs to do accurate discretizations. Fast solvers, solution of linear systems usually take about 90% of the computational time. And so uh, speeding this up is very, very important. And also, after you get the, the uh, numbers from the model, what you need is to verify through experimental data. Uh, this GRIP study, which is for the Parkinson, provides MRI scans. They inject tracers so that one can follow the flow in the brain and try to predict. They also have the timings, how the, how the, the brain actually cleans waste is what is, uh, what is in fact the, the goal of, of those studies. So here is uh, a patient with uh, uh, several MRI scans done done across from zero to 48 hours to uh, this is two days. And uh, OK, so one needs, oops, I should not go that fast. So one needs to, to uh, take those MRI images and uh, make a mesh out of it if we would like to, to do finite element method or to compute the flow. So this is done uh, MRI to surface. That's the first step. And uh, this, uh, there is upcoming book by uh, Vigne and uh, Kent Andre Mardal and other, uh, other people, of course. Then one does surface to mesh. That means once you have the surface, you would like to mesh the brain and then mesh and you run some simulation. And I'll show a, a Darcy flow example here. Uh, so all this, uh, it, it, uh, I, I have to say, uh, I mean, this is, uh, we, we didn't use the finest possible mesh. We used a, a very kind of coarse mesh, maybe not very, it has 200,000 terminals. But all these three steps, uh, I was able to learn how to do in, in, in 10 minutes, and they take seconds, actually, to run all of them. Uh, and this is uh, by software provided by, by uh, Simula and University of Oslo. Okay, so here is uh, the brain, uh, uh, which was obtained by those MRI scans. Okay. And uh, so the, the, this is the left, uh, the left uh, uh, part of the brain is actually meshed. And uh, so we one has the mesh also inside it's the trahydro mesh it's uh, then we use phoenix to to solve that uh, so from mesh to simulation so here is uh, i can see that it says show a movie so i'm going to try to show some movie here uh, 
Okay, so this is uh, the initial condition is what was on one of the MRI scans. And, uh, and uh, we, we can run the movie. And this shows how the tracer gets cleaned after certain amount of hours, after 48 hours. Uh, all this red stuff should disappear, in fact. Uh, as uh, we can see. So this, I mean, this is a saved movie, but the simulation also doesn't take a lot of time. And uh, we can see this also on a slice if we would like. Uh, so this is just uh, on a slice, the same, uh, the same simulation. This all right, so oh, 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 well, uh, this is a so-called macroscopic uh, modeling. I'm not going to uh, talk much more about this. I just want to say that it is a whole, uh, it, it's a, a significant effort to, to, uh, to uh, go from MRI to map to the surface and then from surface to mesh and mesh to do the simulation. And uh, there are, I, I believe there are not many groups that can do that. And then because of the collaboration with Oslo University Hospital, uh, we can compare the results that we get with, with uh, real data. Okay, so the, the problems that I'll focus on are uh, the so-called uh, uh, vascular uh, models, which is uh, fluid flow in vascularized tissue. That that here on the right is uh, one uh, cubic millimeter of a mouse brain, and it has bunch of vessels. And uh, oops, and if one wants to model this, uh, it, we get the so-called uh, 3D, 1D models, and I'll show briefly how this is done. So we look, uh, and of course, here one can think of uh, having Stokes equation or other more complicated equations, but because, uh, or more complicated model, but, but even, even uh, using Darcy uh, flow uh, already exposes what, what the difficulties are. So we have uh, uh, Darcy flow in the vessel, on omega hat, and we have uh, also Darcy flow outside in the cylinder, and we have some coupling condition. Okay, so outside is porous media in the vessel. We have flow, and we want to see how the flow in the vessel affects the pressure in in the porous uh, media that is outside. Okay, the width of this omega hat is very small. And what is usually done, uh, and I think uh, usually this uh, the the way this is modeled is uh, from uh, from uh, I think works by Paolo Zunino and other people in Mox actually in Italy here, reduce omega hat to to lambda. Okay, so uh, that means. One does averaging on this cylinder, and then you let the radius to go to zero. And here are the, I mean, those are pretty recent ne uh, references, and, and one can look at those papers to see how exactly this is done. I mean, it, 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 because, the, I mean, it's an important uh, question, for example, at least uh, what comes to my mind. Uh, on a line in 3D, we, uh, uh, H1 function, which is the solution of Darcy equation, will not have any trace. So one needs to define those things carefully in order to have a 3D por porous media coupled with 1D, uh, 1D vessels. But this is done in those papers, so it is uh, easy to, to, I mean, not easy, but uh, one can understand. Okay, so. Then uh, if we think about it, there is some averaging operator T lambda, and what we would like to do is to make T lambda phi to be equal to the, to, to the 
uh, flow in the uh, and you can think about this is actually a pressure so so one can think about the lambda view we try to make it equal to u lambda okay this means we we put gamma tilde here to go to infinity okay in order to match but of course things cannot match uh, exactly so that requires uh, more careful uh, setup and uh, so, so this is how one reduces uh, omega hat, which is the vessel, to 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 lambda. Okay. So what what we end up with after this is done is uh, not nearly singular, symmetric and positive definite linear system, or if you win, what PDE system. You can think it, it is nearly singular because gamma tilde can become very large, which makes the off-diagonal coupling here very large. OK. And uh, the way this can be written is you write A is equal to some block diagonal, uh, two operators on the diagonal, and then there is something which is singular. So I just want to point this out. Gamma tilde multiplies a singular matrix, which is denoted by MR, okay? And gamma tilde becomes big. So let, let me give a simple example here. Uh, so we have two physics, if you, that could be two Darcy flows with a different permeability, but okay, so we have two physics on two domains, omega one and omega two, and they're coupled at a shared interface and uh, just uh, think about that this uh, R1 and R2 tells us how the two domains communicate through the interface. And uh, we, we look at problems similar that what we had before. I mean, it's the same problem. It can be written in this way. And if we divide by gamma, when gamma goes to infinity, one can see that we have epsilon A and A was like Laplace or like Darcy equation. And we have a singular, uh, singular uh, matrix MR. So we have epsilon, a non-singular operator plus a singular operator, and epsilon goes to to zero. And when we discretize and when we solve, we would like uh, our pro uh, our method to be uh, less dependent on epsilon or independent of epsilon. Uh, computational bottleneck in those uh, things is to solve the systems after discretizations independently of the size of the coupling and other, of course, discretization and physical parameters. So I just uh, pointed to you such a simple setup, but in fact, the real setup is, I mean, more realistic setup is looking at this uh, one millimeter cube of mouse brain where I have displayed all the vessels here. And uh, if you try to do a finite element mesh, this looks on the outside uh, uniform, but in fact, it is uh, refined. And I'll show later the same uh, the same uh, grid as well. So uh, I'll, I'll point out. So th the vessels have uh, six hundred thousand joints, and if you want to have no more than one joint per tetrahedron, you need about uh, two million tetrahedrons to just do this one millimeter cube. But I'll comment on this uh, later too. Okay, so you can see how the finite element mesh and uh, and the vessels go together. And the numbers that I just mentioned are already given here. Uh, so, OK, so the interface is, in fact, all those vessels. So the interface looks like network. It's one dimensional kind of network, but it's everywhere. OK, so the example that uh, I begin began with while it is uh, very valuable, it, I mean, in practice, you, you want to have something that is much more complex, in fact. Okay, 
now here you can take a little break because I think those things are known. And uh, but uh, I, I just try to summarize this, <coughs> uh, how all the things come together, and maybe this is uh, boring, I would say, for you. But uh, so what is a model? A model is find some quantity u uh, where f is given data and a is called the model. Okay, so we say a u is equal to f. We can measure f. And we make some guess for A, and we try to find the U. And if needed, we can go backwards and improve the model and so on. So this uh, first item is called a forward problem. Inverse problem is if you know the solution for several instances, but you have incomplete model, then you try to put things together so that you get better and better model. Of course, solving key inverse problems is usually ill posed and requires solving many many forward problems okay so also i want to remind you what a well conditioned problem is so this means small perturbations in the right hand side or a will lead to small perturbation in the solution this is also known as stability or uh, you know uh, bound if we are talking about A being a linear operator, this is uh, bound on the inverse of it and so on, on the norm of the inverse. U-conditioned problem. So U-conditioned, you cannot just solve AU equal to F on a computer because uh, even the round of error, if your problem is U-conditioned, will actually result in a solution that is not accurate. And really, most of the problems in practice are U-conditioned. Uh, so one needs to take care, and usually the way one takes care of this is uh, try to precondition the ill conditioned problem. So what is a preconditioning? Preconditioning is find easier or convenient model B inverse, I'm going to call it, so that BAU equal to BF is well conditioned. That means this BA is, behaves like identity. So that means B inverse is uh, approximately A. And in all these computations, when we do preconditioning, uh, even one can do preconditioning on PDE level, uh, we, only need, uh, we only need B. We don't need B inverse or to know anything about it. Now, what is a multi-level preconditioning, which uh, in fact is uh, one of the popular way to construct preconditioners? Uh, that is to construct Bs, well, one solves this on different scales. So you use a core, core scale to give you overall picture and then finer and finer locally adding details. Okay. So I will point uh, out how one can design, in fact, uh, some, uh, let's say, uh, Preconditioner for a Laplace equation on a on a unit square and uh, in a multi-level way. Okay, so here we we talk about there is no parameters. We just look at uh, Laplace equation uh, and, and uh, so what, what we're gonna discuss is uh, what we're gonna do is I just want to point this out is that. Uh, I'm looking at the, uh, I will use extensively <laughs> Gauss-Seidel method on different scales, which is a linear iterative method that averages the error locally. You can think about it in this way, okay? And here is, uh, so we take uh, this square grid, we do the five point finite difference, and uh, we, we look at uh, given initial guess U0, we define the next iterate by here using some B, and this B uh, we're gonna discuss later in, in a second how to construct it, okay? So B is a complex operator, it's not very simple. So, okay, so this, let's say, is the initial error, and what we do is we apply one step of gauss seidel method, that means local averaging, two steps, I don't know if you see what happens or five steps, but now the error looks very smooth. Well, if something is smooth, you don't need that many points to represent it. 
So next, what we do is we project the error on a coarser grid. So this one leads to a problem that is four times smaller in size. And now we apply the same reasoning, okay? We do gauss idle's method, gauss idle method. Uh, after five steps, we even go further to a, to a coarser grid to approximate the error. And that is what we, where we solve our problem, but now we have a very, uh, very small number and very, uh, a system of, uh, of a very small size. And uh, then we do uh, a coarse grid correction by correcting the error going back. And you can see that this uh, leads to, uh, to, I mean, almost all the error is gone. <coughs> of course, for more complex problems, one needs to do more iterations. Also, uh, for, for such uh, unit square Laplace, you can prove that you can find the exact convergence rate that it is uniform with respect to the mesh size. Okay, so I, I just, uh, so if you do all this, uh, we, we are writing this software, Hasnix is together with the people in Oslo and uh, I have with uh, Tufts, we write the, uh, we have the Hasmat, which is a fast solver uh, software. And uh, so on a structured grid, that means similar grid, like what I showed in 2D, but in 3D, one needs hour and a half in serial, as long as you have enough memory to solve 8 billion unknowns. If you do this in parallel, I saw somebody in Simula is doing it for um, probably several minutes only, uh, or 100 billion. Okay, so if you do this in parallel, that. But this is on structured grid. If you do unstructured grid and you use some new technique uh, like algebraic multigrid, then one, need, one can only do a 10 times uh, smaller problem, okay? You cannot do 8 billion. Uh, you can do maybe 10 or 20 times smaller. Anyway, so, but everything works nicely. And now we're gonna go to this, uh, uh, to go back to where we started. So now we look at <coughs> nearly singular problem. So we have A, which is identity that is not singular. And we have some uh, some singular matrix, and we would like to run uh, uh, for epsilon small. This is three by three matrix, okay? So so, uh, and I'll show. Okay, so sorry. Uh, okay, so if if epsilon, this three means the matrix is three by three. Next is the is the uh, uh, epsilon. Okay, so we take epsilon equal to one. We need 13 iterations. We take epsilon equal to negative one. You need 91 iterations. Let's go, let's be brave. Take epsilon. This is three by three system, okay, and it is non singular. It is positive definite. And Gauss Zeidel must converge. So we take uh, epsilon 10 to the negative five. And this will take uh, many, many iterations. Actually, I'm not going to wait for it. It takes more than 500,000 iterations for a three by three system. All right. So, uh, so one needs to, 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 to have a special way of solving uh, those uh, equations, obviously. Okay, so here is this uh, in a table. And this is from a paper, which I will cite later with that. Uh, Yung Julie and Jin Chao Xu and I wrote in and uh, Jin Biao Wu wrote in 2007. Uh, uh, just how to fix all this. I mean, that's the that's the the point. And uh, okay, so here is uh, I just remind what the problem is. We have interface. We have coupling, which is strong. That means epsilon is small, and we need to to uh, to find a way to solve all this. Okay. So uh, now, uh, because uh, if you remember, gauss idle smooths the error, but uh, uh, you have too many smooth, smoothing the error means it, uh, the, the smooth error corresponds to uh, uh, eigen, uh, think about eigen vectors that change slowly. And, uh, but here, because of this epsilon, 
anything that is in the kernel of MR is actually algebraically smooth. So you cannot reduce the the size the size of your problem and continue like that because uh, because you have too many algebraically smooth components. So we go back to the theory and for this we use subspace correction method which I will quickly say what it is. You have your problem in some original space V which is Rn if you want to think about it. We split in smaller problems on each of the subspaces and we solve on each subspace and then we put things together. Okay, so this I already said, uh, one can use uh, preconditioning and construct B in the way we did before. Okay, uh, and this is a two level algebraic multigrid, which means you have some G given as a right hand side, you solve, uh, you, you smooth, then you correct, and so on. I mean, this uh, was seen on the picture, so I'll skip it, it's not uh, very. Now we, we, we come back to the paper I was mentioning, uh, which, uh, which uh, actually stated the condition that uh, whatever the composition of spaces we have, it has to also, every component of the kernel has to be represented in each, not every, this is not right. The components of the kernel also have to be represented in the subspaces. So this means that we need something like a block Gauss-Seidel instead of, or block Jacobi instead of, uh, uh, and this in, ensures uh, uniform convergence in gamma. The result is in, in the paper I'm quoting here. And now I will run the same example. And I, I just want to point, so we run Gauss-Seidel method. This corresponds to a space decomposition that is given here, V1, V2, V3. The kernel is this V0, and it, does, it is in none of the spaces, okay? So it somehow is outside, so... <coughs> and then we have, uh, we have uh, uh, 500,000 iterations. So now if we include the kernel for the same problem, it takes only three iterations, okay? And we can do here even... It doesn't matter. The smaller epsilon is the better it behaves. Once you uh, once you do uh, once you take care of the kernel. Okay. So basically, the thing is, you need a decomposition that satisfies kernel decomposition condition. Decomposition is in subspaces, and then once you have this, uh, you you can you can solve this uh, strong coupled problems no matter how complicated they are. Okay, so this is uh, okay. So this is how one does it actually in practice. Is following, if you remember, uh, we were talking about multi-physics problem, talking uh, to to uh, to different Darcy equations, are talking through interface. The interface is uh, described by the talking uh, is described by R one and R two here, and uh, and uh, so the sparsity of R one and R two determine, in fact, uh, uh, so the, the sparsity of this, uh, uh, of these uh, two operators determines how one can construct the spaces. And uh, I, I will show a picture here. So imagine you have one dimensional grid going through a two, three dimensional tetrahedral mesh, and then uh, the block the, I said you use block gauss though. the block uh, will correspond to uh, to the sparsity pattern of this R1 and R2, which is here painted in in, <coughs> in violet, in purple. Okay, so one block will be all the 3D degrees of freedom plus this 1D degree of freedom as well. But this all is given uh, by the non-zero structure of the operator that we had before. This works not only in 3D, 1D, could work in 3D, 2D, or 2D, 1D, or whatever. Okay, so here is uh, uh, some test cases that I'll, I will show. And uh, the, 
So we, we vary the coupling parameter and we use uh, unsmoothed aggregation AMG. You can ask Pasco what this is. It's one of the methods that she actually has developed. And uh, so, so uh, here are the test cases. So we have tissue dimension, tissue that is very thin and it has uh, 1D structure into it. And uh, the number of iterations with the increasing, so the dimension of uh, three dimension, the dimension of, of the 3D problem is on the left and 1D problem all the, uh, is on the right. And uh, you can see that the number of iterations are uniformly bounded, even though this is like 10 to the power 10, uh, the coupling parameter. And here we list some condition numbers, and those are all close to one, except here in this case, but this is uh, 2.3 is also fine. So one can solve those systems without uh, uh, paying uh, too much uh, in computational time, uh, actually paying nothing in computational time. Uh, there is another uh, problem, uh, which is, oops, uh, which is on, uh, on uh, a brain of a mouse, not the one up here, I think is human, but uh, we are looking at a mouse brain uh, and, uh, and, uh, then uh, we always have a uh, uniform, uh, uniform number of iterations when we are solving the AU equal to F and the condition number is equal to four, which means our precondition works very well. I mean, it doesn't equal four. There are some digits uh, after that, but it's pretty much very uh, absolutely uniform. And again, we, we vary gamma, the coupling parameter up to 10 to the 10. Okay, so what about the theory? I will probably not uh, talk about this uh, too much since I think I have about two minutes maybe. Uh, but uh, okay, one constructs uh, that there is a, a lot of literature on additive two level Schwartz. And uh, for this particular strong coupled problems in mixed dimensions, what one needs to do is to identify the kernel and the, the splitting in subspaces needs to, to satisfy the kernel condition, the kernel decomposition condition. And one can prove, in fact, the theorem, which I think uh, I, think, uh, I will st state uh, right here. Uh, first of all, uh, those are, uh, <coughs> this on the right is, you can see, one needs a stable decomposition. If this is a bounded number, anything on the right should be uniformly bounded to have a uniform preconditioner. Okay, so anything on the right side, uh, which is this infimum with respect to decompositions. And what is important is, I mean, in this business in particular, all these are equivalent to some weighted graph of Laplacian. I forgot the word weighted. If we are talking about Darcy flow, well, if you are talking about uh, stocks, then th this is a different story. But we are talking here about Darcy flow or positive definite uh, problem. And uh, okay, so I'll show one summary and then another summary in a while. But uh, one has the est this uniform estimate. So B inverse is the same pretty is bounded by a okay so so the bound below is always true the bound above is not uh, is the difficult one to establish so and uh, again we need uh, we need it's a no the non-standard part comes that we need one and the same decomposition of a vector or of a function that works for both the non-singular operator and the singular operator. It's stable in those two norms that could be different. One of them can actually be only metric. Okay, so uh, those things I already uh, pointed out. So we formulated a 3D or 1D problem as a nearly singular symmetric positive definite uh, system. We solve it precondition with AMG. 
and we construct AMG the smoother instead of Gauss idle. We use specially chosen block Gauss idle. Uh, the blocks are chosen so that uh, it, they depend on our problem. Uh, so in that way, this is like a nonlinear method in some sense. Uh, and the theory is not limited to uh, 3D, 1D. Uh, there is uh, th those, uh, uh, one can couple Darcy and BO stocks or this uh, also B domain method. It means that uh, both the 1D and the 3D grids are, are have the same degrees of freedom. Th those also can be used in, 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 in more complicated equations. So now I go back to this example uh, of the uh, of the bra mouse brain of the one cubic millimeter. Uh, I just remind you how the mesh looks like, and we have uh, uh, this much uh, elements, <coughs> about ten million. Okay, so this the results that I showed uh, coupling three D one D is promising, but but. Again, we are we are simulating uh, one millimeter cube. So if we want to simulate the whole brain of the mouse, this is uh, one billion. Okay, so this is probably possible possible because I showed you that you know you can do eight billion equations if you use multi grid and uh, and parallel computing and so on. Now, to simulate in uh, a human brain, if you want to simulate the flow <coughs> together with all the blood vessels and so on, it requires 10 to the 12 unknowns, which is 1,000 billion. I don't know if it's called trillion or not, but those are a lot. Maybe the today's computer power, I don't think one can model the whole thing. Maybe 100 billion is okay, but I don't think 1,000 billion is, uh, is still out of reach, I think. Anyway, uh, I, I am certain that uh, many novel research tools will uh, will come out that uh, will allow us to to model such a complicated uh, uh, complicated biological processes, and of course, interdisciplinary uh, and collaborative work will be key in. Uh, fighting such diseases which are actually parkinson is the fastest growing uh, neurological diseases not disease nowadays in, in the world okay so these are some references and uh, the work we have done including some software and uh, finally uh yeah i thank the support from uh, fulbright and also from nsf uh, thank you very much Thank you so much, Ludmi. <coughs> interesting uh, talk. Uh, I don't know if uh, there are questions. <coughs> are there questions, Italia? No, Pasqua. There are no questions for the moment. Oh, perfect. So, uh, I think uh, that uh, maybe we can uh, consider everything is clear. Anyway, this clear, right? <laughs> if you need to do um, some question to Ludmi, Ludmi is with us all the week, so you can send an email. And if you are interested in uh, his software, you can download uh, and uh, you can chat. Okay, so thank you so much, everybody, for coming. And thank you again, Ludmi, for your talk. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Mm -hmm.